my second video about the Litter Robot Open Air, I'll be going over the maintenance and cleanup of the product. In focus right now, we have my Litter Robot Open Air after about six months of use, and it's moderately dirty, and the litter uh, level is low. Um, so I'll go ahead and empty the rest of the litter. Um, and in my first video, I had mentioned that, or hinted at the fact that I didn't really know what the empty function was for on a consistent use basis, but right now I can see that it comes in handy. So whenever you want to perform some cleanup or maintenance um, and you haven't switched out the litter in a while, that's where the empty function definitely comes in handy. I have on occasion, I think once, uh, seen the unit activate the empty cycle. And I wasn't sure if that was by mistake or not. It looks like my cat just tripped up the empty cycle. So I think Snickers just tripped up the empty cycle, so I just had to press the button again manually. So now it's going back to its original position. And in the background, I have a manual litter box. Um, so when I do this review, the cats have somewhere to go. All right. So now what I'm going to do is unplug the unit from the power and go through the steps of removing the bonnet and performing maintenance and cleanup. I should probably power it off first. Take out the wall charger. And unplug it from the back. With the litter robot powered off, I'm going to go ahead and remove the bonnet. Um, it's pretty easy. You've got these tabs on the sides, so you press this tab. It just slips right off. And then on the other hand side, we have another tab. And then I just pull it right off like that. And let's take a look at it. Just kind of a half circle shape, shape piece. And that is where the wiring for the uh, light goes on. So when I clean this, and there's more uh, connections that lead to the battery um, for the light power. And when I clean this, um, I'll probably just wipe it down, uh, avoiding the electrical components like this part. And um, this part uh, probably could wipe down as well, but just make sure to really dry it off before turning it on again. Right, covering, uh, it's got the tracks and the connection for the bonnet and then we have the disposal hole um, we have what they call the key in the back and the source for the power and i believe uh, for the also a spot for the battery backup although i'm not sure how that's going to work yet i don't think it's out yet and then more tracks uh, leading to the other side of the unit Next up, we have removal of the globe unit, which houses the litter uh, most of the time. So we're just going to take it off with a gloved hand. Let me see what the base looks like. Okay, so here we have the base of the unit without the globe and the area which the excrement goes through, through the disposal hole in the globe itself. Um, and then there we have the little wheel that is controlled by uh, the functions on the control panel and moves the actual uh, globe unit to perform its operations. I removed the litter box pan 
and we can take a look at where any other litter had made its way that we'll have to clean up. So even below the pan there's some somehow some dirt uh, made its way into the the housing unit um, and there's also litter trapped within some of the holes so we'll have to turn it upside down and get rid of it and clean it out with a q-tip or something. It doesn't look like there's any electrical components although if you do I wouldn't I wouldn't visible they're all in the base below this compartment I'm guessing um, so definitely another shake and wipe down uh, operation on this part so I moved the entire base into the bathroom for for cleanup and I've noticed that somehow in the housing the base housing part of the base there's accumulated a lot more junk than uh, I would have expected to so definitely gonna clean that up kind of unsure how that made its way there but it did and then if we take a close look there is some it's probably where the power is sourced right behind um, where the control panel sits right next to the uh, where the litter pan usually goes so I prepared a cardboard box with a cut open trash bag that I can collect all the um, stuff that dirt that falls out of the unit. So I'm just gonna turn it over by the handle. Bunch of stuff fell out, uh, which is um, good because it, in addition of cleaning the base up, it also reduces the weight of the unit a little bit, which is important in the actual function. Um, and I noticed that we have a circuit board on some sort on both sides of the housing unit. So I was curious to see what it looks like below the control panel, so I went ahead and unscrewed the four screws that were in these four holes, or actually one, two, three, four, five screws, and then uh, just took the cover off. And what we'll see below is the internals. Uh, we've got a circuit board, a bunch of connections uh, for power, and probably the pressure sensor and things like that. Um, and then we have the actual engine, the motor that powers the the movement of the globe. If we take this rubber protector off, and there is the gear um, that turns, that is powered by this little motor in the back. And then if we take this whole part off, see it's just simply uh, a simple 12 volt DC powered motor. Um, and inside this box, maybe some gears or something to transfer power to the to the shaft, which rotates the main cog looking wheel that connects to the that has the teeth that connects to the um, globe. Another important component to the litter robot, in addition to the engine, is this little piece right there uh, that actually connects back to the main circuit board and that is the pressure sensor in the back of the unit so I think the way that works is the pressure is sensed by that little metal knob on the top of that screw looking thing and that converts um, the pressure into a weight measurement that can then be used to detect um, whether there's activity going on inside the globe or theoretically that's how I think it works but in any event that is the pressure sensor. Another in some ways oddly fundamental part uh, to this to the proper operation of the litter robot is the bonnet that encloses the globe um, I say it's important because without it, you actually can't operate the unit by design. Uh, 
there's a there's the power connections that connect to the base that then lead up all the way to this little circuit board and that circuit board contains three resistors and three little lights that act as the lighting unit for the uh, for the litter robot during operation and at night um, I say it's oddly integral to the unit because without this component um, I think I mentioned it already the litter robot will not turn its uh, engine on and will not function properly so that's why this is important and I'm actually thinking about switching out the LEDs but uh, that's for another day so that the colors will be different for the litter box litter pan I'll be cleaning it out by first removing any remaining litter um, and then I'll be wiping it down with some water and uh, hydrogen peroxide um, and after looking at it, it doesn't seem to contain any electrical components so other than watching out for that carbon filter um, I'd say using water is pretty a pretty safe idea to clean it off with and also you want to make note to remove this guy and clean it out because it's the rubber step mat and it um, catches a bunch of a litter from when the cats step on and off the unit and then of course if you have extra carbon filters you can replace that now too so the litter pan has been mostly cleaned out now I'm just gonna flip it over in case anybody wanted to see what the bottom of it looks you can see the front has the carbon filter covering a grill for air venting and then here's the bottom I'll go ahead and wash that down a little bit too and the way I ended up cleaning it was I filled this part up with the water that just reaches up to this um, plastic part right below the carbon filter took out all the um, remaining litter parts and uh, wiped it down afterwards with some hydrogen peroxide okay next up we're gonna wash the globe um, for this piece I'm gonna be pretty liberal with my use of water uh, just because as I previously mentioned there's no electronic components whereas with the the unit holding the base, the base unit which holds the tray pan uh, has electronics and the, the bonnet which covers this p glow piece also has um, some smaller to prove that it's safe to use water um, here it is about a third of the way filled I actually used some uh, dish soap as well um, since that's more abundant than uh, hydrogen peroxide um, but I'll wipe it down with some hydrogen peroxide afterwards so yeah just filling it up right now and then um, once it's, uh, it's at a good level where I'll start wiping it down and uh, you can see it's pretty dirty right now but this is kind of the soaking stage thing to keep in mind when you're cleaning the globe is that the um, this part which moves inside the globe is called which is connected to that key piece called a shield uh, make sure you wipe that down um, as well um, from the back where they dispose a hole typically uh, well where it is on the globe um, relative to uh, it being upside down and then so I'll just rotate that and wipe it down with the sponge a couple of things I noticed when cleaning this globe. Uh, first off is that this piece right here doesn't come off. So it's kind of hard to reach around and clean the back side of this um, filtering shield. Um, but it doesn't look like it's that dirty. So um, I'd really just scrub the back of this. Um, and also, oh, this rubber liner, it can get detached like this. Uh, so if you really want to be thorough, I think you could get underneath and also clean that part, but it doesn't have any exposure, so I don't see the reason to. Uh, but anyway, when you're, while you're cleaning it, you want to make sure it doesn't um, come off. So, you know, it just hinges on this lip. So if you get it back on, you just lift the, the rubber and pull it over the lip. Just like that. 
All right, so uh, after a water bath, a hydrogen peroxide wipe down, and another hot water bath. Uh, the first one containing dish soap. Um, pretty much all done with the globe. Uh, one thing I wanted to also note is that I think you can um, take away and split these two halves. Um, I'm not sure about these guys. Maybe you can pry them off. I'm not too sure. But I know there's screws holding the two halves together. Um, around the base so if you really wanted to there might be a way to separate the halves I don't really see it necessary most of the gunk was inside the globe if not all of it so that's it I'm getting ready to clean the base of the unit which is probably the trickiest part of the unit because um, it still accumulates a little bit of dirt definitely not as much as the globe but enough to uh, warrant a good scrubbing um, yet it contains all of the fundamental controls um, for the actual cycling of the unit. Um, so we have to be careful not to um, introduce any water into those electrical components. Um, and so, you know, I would say add water to the base, um, but there's wiring that goes down to the pressure sensor. And there's wiring that comes up here as well. And I think um, there's also wiring that comes up from what's intended to be the battery backup holder. Um, so I'm going to stay safe. I think I could wash it down um, a little bit and let it dry before plugging it in. But I'm going to be safe and just wipe it down um, wherever I see the dirt. So a couple of perspectives on the base because I know in my other video people were asking about this. So this is what the video looks like uh, facing up. Um, and we can see the internals. And I've already cleaned this out so it's looking a lot better. Um, that is where the, the litter pan, litter tray goes. And then here's the bottom of the unit. Uh, it's got this little stand. And then here we have two wires with two connectors that are taped together. And this is where I believe the battery backup will go. Um, and you have the negative and positive wires running to those connections. Okay. So I'm pretty much done cleaning the base. Um, one thing I wanted to point out is that uh, in addition to wiping it down and wiping away the dirt from the base, um, these little holes, they tend to get filled with litter as well. Um, so what I did was I just kind of banged it upside down to free any particles that were stuck in there. And that pretty much got rid of them. Um, if you want to be really meticulous, uh, you grab a, a brush and kind of scrub it out too. Last but not least, we have the bonnet, uh, which encloses the uh, litter robot's globe and contains the lighting system up there uh, for the night light um, and it's pretty important because without this the robot will not operate at all uh, I think it has some sort of detection system that detects whether the bonnet's uh, connected to it or not um, when watching this this is going to be more of a wipe down we can be a little bit more liberal with our water but we still want to avoid that area and then that area um, so that there's no water accumulation um, between the electrical connections. And we don't want to short anything out once we're up and running again. I'm going to add that um, there's not much to wash down. It's pretty clean because it's not exposed to any of the cat activity. Only the dirty part I really see is this part. Um, this black plastic part has some dirt accumulated on it. So I'll just wipe that down. Yeah, there we go. It's uh, all wiped down, cleaned up. I wiped down the, the top side and then I uh, wiped down the uh, this piece that had the dirt originally and then I wiped down the cover for the um, LED containing circuit board. It's a little plastic cover, just slightly um, fogged up right here. So, should be good to go. So, one thing that originally uh, annoyed me because I couldn't figure out the proper way until a little bit later was how to add the bags back in um, 
And if you're anything like me, you know, you're just used to simply putting trash bags over trash cans. These things come with little tabs. Um, and what I would originally try to do is putting this trash bag in lengthwise. I'd originally just try to take the top and just stuff them in there. And what happened is, I do that to all four, and even now, it would just pop back out. And I kind of kept wrestling with that until I figured out that instead of just grabbing the top part of it, you want to grab somewhere near the top, but then stuff the whole thing, including the top part, into it. And then that will um, connect with the hinges, um, the bottom part of the hinge, which holds it in place. And so, and just do that for all four. So remember, not just the top, you want to grab near the top, then just kind of shove it in there. Just like that. And then, again, not the top, but the middle, or near the middle. And then, that's it. Took me probably, what, less than 30 seconds? And just trying to shove in the top part. Took me five minutes just to get them all balanced in. So there we have it. Base unit with trash bag ready to go. In case you're wondering, the trash bags I'm using are 10 gallon, really thin um, bags that came in packs of 500. So uh, 10 gallon will work. Probably even eight or even a little less than 10. Definitely more than 10. I have all the individual components of the litter robot open air cleaned up and dried. I will finish the process by reassembling everything and I'll start by placing the glow back onto the base unit and all I have to do here is make sure the tracks line up the teeth of the cog which is powered by the engine. It's pretty easy, just kind of falls into place like that. Back onto the base of the litter robot opener. We'll continue by reinstalling the bonnet. And removal consisted of just popping those tabs off from the tab holes. However, reinstallation involves first placing the bonnet at an angle so that the back tabs that stick out go in first and then the tabs in the front will then fall easily. So we'll go ahead and place that at an angle and you want to get them both in at the same time. A little tricky. So at an angle we got the two back ones in and then the two front ones are easier. You just have to make sure they line up on both sides. And then just pop it in and they both go in. Oh, you can get that part. Just like it there go. So a little tricky, but once you do it, it's not too bad. The litter robot opener we need to put back in is the litter pan with the bag, clean bag already installed. So we just slide it on in. This is the easiest one to put in because you do it all the time. Okay. And that completes the reassembly. So now it's time for the final test. We'll go back and we'll Adjust the key in the back so that it's straight with its placeholder in the back. And then we'll test it out by reintroducing the power. Plugging it in. And then the unit it as sitting at an angle, so we'll see if it'll adjust for that. 
So looks like everything was a success. Now it's going through some sort of adjustment phase, hopefully. Since we started off with it being unlevel, I'm curious to see if it'll go back to a, its proper starting position. And then after this part, Well, so that's interesting. It looks like we have to reseat the globe with the rubber liner basically straight in line with the rubber mat. Otherwise, it won't uh, be in the correct position. could still be wrong, but that's what I'm guessing right now. It's a little spooky, being that empty. So now it's going the other way. Wow, so never mind, it actually was able to correct its own position properly. So that's pretty cool. I did not know it would do that. Now all we have to do is reintroduce the litter and um, resume normal operation. Step in the whole process, or the final, final step, is you guessed it, adding that litter back in there. Um, there's, you might notice some white splotches in my litter robot. And that just, I don't know if it's pain or what, but that was the way it came um, with that artifact. I don't know what it is, but it doesn't seem to have any impact. Anyway, um, so yeah, just pour the litter in through the hole. Uh, sometimes I'll, I'll lift it up to put at an angle, so it's easier to pour the litter in. Um, but there's no official way to do it, I think. It's just make it work just below the litter level line yeah, right here so powering it on and uh, it's as good as new um, I'll go over some of uh, the things that I'll be looking for uh, in the future um, the things I've had issues with that hopefully this maintenance may have uh, helped fix and this cleanup maintenance it's been six months since I performed the open air teardown and cleanup I just showed you guys in the video. And since that cleanup, the Litter Robot Open Air has performed pretty much flawlessly. Right now, it's coming up to another point where I'll have to perform that same procedure just to get it to a nice and clean state. But functionally, nothing's wrong with it. And all the issues I had experienced before the cleanup had gone away after the cleanup. So some of the things uh, that were really persistent where the litter robot would get stuck mid-cycle or right after it had dumped the the accumulated buildup and dirt from the, the cats and it was really frustrating because it would happen fairly often and would get stuck in that state. So there's a couple of takeaways to be had from that. So number one, I think that you want to make sure the base is clear of any clutter, especially outside of the trash bags. During the cleanup, you guys might have seen that there was a lot of buildup of debris, and that I think adds is a contributing factor to some of the issues I just mentioned. Uh, right now, when I checked it, it seems like 
the base was pretty much clear. Like I said, I haven't had any issues. So I think those two are related. Uh, now, why did that happen in the first place? Well, I'd say uh, one thing would be to make sure that your trash cans are always properly installed, that they don't get overfilled in general or even in one area. Uh, being overfilled in one area may also just trigger uh, the early full, the open air full state where it won't rotate after three cycles once it thinks that the, the litter pan is full. So you want to make sure and even it out if you think it's high in one spot but not evenly spread out. At the same time, if it's overfilled across the board, you want to make sure to clean it out right away. Make sure that your bags are properly installed and that periodically check the base to make sure that that accumulation isn't there. Like I said, right now, it's pretty much clear. So I think uh, naturally I built up a, a intuition on how to uh, perform routine maintenance, such as replacing the trash bag and things like that, that I showed in the video. Another thing you might, you would want to check too is make sure that pressure sensor is clear of any obstruction since that plays an important role in detecting how much is in the in the globe, how much litter, if the cats are in the grove, things like that. So anyway, uh, I think um, it'll continue to perform as long as I follow those steps. And like I said, that maintenance really helped me and I hope it really helps you. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. And thanks for watching.